I am Jerby and today we are here at Symmetry Plastic Surgery Clinic in Makati and we will be talking about breast augmentation surgery and breast implants. Now hold your horses, I'm not gonna get one today but we will be talking everything about it, all the nitty gritty behind it and today we will be joined by Dr. Marco Carlo Capellan who is our expert in today's interview. So if you've been following me on my channel, you know that I love featuring the latest innovation and beauty and it's the same today for breast implants. Today, I'm going to be sharing with you the risks, the pros, the preparations that you need, everything that you need to know if you are interested to have your own breast augmentation surgery or boob job. Having said that, I am all for enhancing your natural beauty, not really totally overhauling yourself, but just enhancing your natural beauty. And if the time comes that I'd have to go under the knife, I think it's fine. Now I understand that plastic surgery is still a sensitive topic among Filipinos. So today I'm going to be sharing with you all the information that you need. This video is going to be more on the educational side and informational side so that we break all the stigma around having a boob job. All right, so here with me today is Dr. Carlo Marco Capella, who is also a member of the Philippine Association of Plastic Reconstructive and Aesthetic Surgeons. And he also currently practices his own Cosmetic medical procedure here at his own office in Makati. Yes. Good morning, Doc. Good morning, Mama. Good morning. What can you do for you now? Okay, so Doc, for today, we will be talking everything about breast augmentation okay. surgery okay. and breast implants and everything about it. Okay, sure. So, for girls who are like me, yes. who might need some boom, maybe you can shed some light on like the basic things about breast augmentation surgery. And I was curious, Doc. What are the common reasons or motivations of your patients in having a boob job? Okay, so basically um, there are different type of, of different sets of patients na who also want to do breast augmentation. No? So first set is that patients that, like yourself, just want to enhance your breast, like to make it a little bigger or a little more projected. These are the first set. No? The other set is um, yung patients na post-pregnancy, like mga mommies, because after pregnancy, the, sh the natural shape of the breast normally uh, parang will be deflated, mas magiging best. And uh, they want to retain that normal breast uh, shape again. So they, they, uh, they plan to, or they, they also want to do breast augmentation to bring back that natural breast ano, um, form. Na. And then uh, the third set is yung force yung mga transgender. Kasi di ba, transgender, they want to make a full transformation. Kasi they are fed up with um, taking um, hormone uh, therapy because she has a you know, para And then the size they, that they want to achieve, we tie in hormones or any other injections. So the best part and the safest is to do a breast augmentation with, with using breast implants. No? And lastly, um, it's not always about vanity. So, minsan, um, yung mga post, um, if, you, if you heard about uh, breast reconstruction, yung mga post. Um, breast cancer patients, mm -hmm. they undergo mastectomy. Because mm -hmm. if you have breast cancer, we, you have to take out that affected breast. Mm -hmm. After all the after all the chemotherapies, no matter the therapies, sometimes you want to bring that you have to bring you have, the patients want to bring back their breast. So one option is to do breast augmentation by breast implants. So of course you can also do breast reconstruction, but uh, one implant, uh, one option is you know, breast augmentation. Yeah. So, so basically these are the sets of patients that uh, undergo breast augmentation. And that's true, no? Mm -hmm. Honor the days that having a boob job is basically primarily for beauty or cosmetics purposes. Right now, there's also a functional side to it, yes. like you've mentioned, for the breast cancer survivors. Yes. It, it can really be, a, I guess, an essential yes. for them to bring back their um, confidence. Yeah, confidence and yes. being uh, complete. Yes, that's true, that's true. That's true. So, Doc, is there any like pre-op procedure or pre-op preparation needed? Yeah, yeah. So, if you're planning to do uh, breast augmentation, mm -hmm. uh, first, uh, first thing is that you have to be healthy, no? Mm -hmm. So, you have to be fit. So, to do that, uh, you have to do uh, routine laboratory tests. Okay. So these routine tests are usually good in the clinic. So, once, once you're clear with that, uh, you can be seen by a cardiologist. The cardiologist will give you a uh, clearance, a uh, cardiopulmonary clearance. That will tell you that you are fit for surgery. 
and then also if you're if you have any active um, uh, illness like uh, hypertension mm -hmm. or diabetes or asthma, this has to be controlled. Di pa yung perfect kasi mo po pero again na no sa like that. You have to be all your illness must be controlled. You must be um, cardiopulmonary cleared by 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 a cardiologist, especially my cardiologist. I have a team kasi. And then you ask you have to be also be cleared by by anesthesiologist. Kasi you'll be going under anesthesia. Kasi uh, normally the breast augmentation is done under general anesthesia. So once you get that clearance, you can undergo. And then also, um, if you're um, smoking, you have to stop that. That's at least uh, at least two weeks before the surgery. Better kung wag ka you stop stop smoking na lang. How about vaping? Ah, yeah, you have to stop that. Any okay. vaping, e-cigarettes, you have to stop that um, at least two weeks. Okay. You know, and then also if you have, if you're taking like aspirins, if you're taking any vitamin E, you have to stop that at least those two weeks. So you know, these are again safety precautions so that future possible um, complications will be prevented. How about birth control pills? Uh, yeah, I normally tell my patients to uh, stop it at least so, yeah, because sometimes it causes also uh, like bleeding and other complications. So, yeah. okay. And alcohol? Alcohol is okay, okay. man. Oh, my, yeah, it's just no problem. Oh, okay. <laughs> Alright. So, thank you for that. Doc, how do you choose the right implants? I can see now we have... Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> again, one aspect of breast augmentation is you have to uh, choose the breast implant. Especially the size. So that's the most important one. Mm -hmm. uh, it's really um, what the patients want, but again, before that, you have to also consider your, your height. Yeah, your natural build. Yeah, your natural build. And you want to your small, and then you want big. Although some people like that, but uh, normally, I, I what I use is my natural natural. Yes. So I take into good, good consideration the height of the patient, mm -hmm. the, the chest size, mm -hmm. the breast diameter, the breast diameter, uh, the skin height. The skin elasticity, so this all comes into play. That's why, um, again, if you consider, if you're really serious about considering breast augmentation, you have to see a plastic surgeon. No? So that all of this will be measured, and then uh, you know, to tell you what's the right size for you. And then again, it's just recommendation. Mostly, because especially um, the palate is too large. Well, then, man, it's possible as long as the body can uh, can handle it. As long as you uh, can cash it. That's why you have to. They can consider what I mentioned. Mm -hmm. So, yun. Uh, with regards to type of implant, uh, again, there's different types. As you can see here, I have samples. No? So, we have this smooth water round. Mm -hmm. And then there's texturing, textured implant, and then parang meron ding semi textured. No? So, basically, these are um, doctor's preference and also a patient's preference. No? Now, uh, with regards to safety, um, texturing uh, comes into play when it comes to. When it comes to um, safety of the of the, the implants, no. So yon. So there's a type of implant that's saline and um, silicone. So what we have here is your silicone type. No, mm -hmm. uh, silicone type of implant. Uh, normally, kasi we don't normally sa Philippines we don't normally use saline for for breast augmentation. Because it's more prone to rupture, no, so leakage. Yes. Yeah. So that's why uh, how I prefer uh, silicone breast implants. Because mm -hmm. it's more safe. Uh, it's less um, with, uh, with complications such as uh, rupture or leakage, mm -hmm. you know, so um, yung mga rippling, so smooth. No? Yeah, usually mga rippling, it's more uh, associated with uh, texturing mm -hmm. type of implant. So meron din, uh, meron din shape, so again, like I mentioned, round to meron din yung uh, teardrop or natural shape implants. No? With, uh, with this type of implant, specifically Motiva, mm -hmm. uh, they have that effect. No, para siyang uh, round, but if you stand up, it, it, it creates a more parang uh, teardrop shape or natural type of uh, shape of breast. So, oh. so parang ganun. So, yun ang mundi ba? I so, see. Also, is it safe to say that in saline, breast implants are the first generation implants? Yeah, Tapos the newer ones are silicone? Yes, ma'am. Yes, and it is what you recommend? Yes, uh, what I recommend is again, is uh, um, si uh, silicone gel implants. Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, what I don't recommend now is since it's already uh, available in the market, mm -hmm. it's against Motiva implant. Oh, now, okay. uh, you ask why Motiva? No? As you can see, no, um, compared to the texture, breast implant related complication, the mm -hmm. most common long term is that capsular contraction. 
That's why contraction is what happens is since this is foreign body, right? Yeah. So if you put it inside your body, there's going to be some kind of reaction. Mm -hmm. So sometimes that your body will make a capsule around this implant. And sometimes that capsule, para siyang scar inside. That oh. capsule becomes hard. It doesn't and, have to make recognize it as its own? Yeah, yeah, because it's foreign. It's, okay. it's that part of you. So it will create a capsule inside. And that mm -hmm. capsule will sometimes, within, uh, within 10 years, becomes thick, it becomes oh. hard. Yes. Now, with, with this implant, Motiva, again, it's uh, it's been proven that it, it is less, uh, with, with less contracture. They claim that it's even uh, less than 1% contracture rate. And one more thing, uh, right now the most uh, dreaded long-term complication. Mm -hmm. uh, several cases have been reported in the States and also in Europe. It's a breast uh, implant associated um, and a plastic large cell lipoma. So it's mm -hmm. cancer actually. You know? So it's been, uh, some some implants already been uh, really correlated with that, you know, with this um, as uh, illness, no? especially with, with the texturing. The texturing implant banned that in, in, in some parts of Europe because it's really correlated with with uh, yun, yeah, the IEA, ALCL. No, uh, with, with Motiva implants, actually, um, so far, they've been they've done studies. That's why I really recommend this implant right now. It's halos zero. With the shell of the implant, it's nano smooth. Mm -hmm. no, it's, uh, again, it's less tissue reaction and uh, most most uh talaga pila mo nanda isyo zero uh, right now wala silang um complication with regards to yung 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 types of uh, complications. There are breast-related complications, breast implant-related complications, at saka operation-related complications. Mm -hmm. So operation-related complications yung mga uh, post of bleeding, hematoma, there are infection, of course, but again, yeah, so just love you, and this always, always comes into play. But these are very, uh, very rare, less than 1%. Now with the breast implant-related complication, so uh, again, uh, most common is long-term complications with capsular contraction. Right? Others are rippling. Rippling is that, as you can see with, with Motiva, it's mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. full, right? Yeah. Compared, compared with this one, look at this. Yung feeling ng implants niya, parang di ba may depression. Yeah. Kita mo rin dito. Hindi siya fully filled. Well, hindi na lang magkita another with, with, with Motiva. It's really filled. So rippling is less. Oh. Or not even, they report as in less than 1%. No? Oh, uh, or with rotation, um, rotation is uh, usually associated with teardrop shape. But again, with, with ergonomics, since it's round and it's uh, when you start at it acts as teardrop, rotation is again uh, not a problem. So, uh, basically, those are most common uh, complications of uh, breast uh, implant related complications. Mm -hmm. And of course, the most dreaded, like when I mentioned, is no. Uh, breast implant associated uh, yes. Yes. Talaga, which is talaga it's related they really correlated with the texture so again uh, with, with, with the shell of um, Motiva mm -hmm. uh, they report right now it's zero oh wow yeah, wala talaga siyang uh, cause with uh, oh, well, so, another concern though this is like my personal thing because no? I am medyo I am Parang there, there are people who are in pag na mabilis mag ah, okay. diba? So, uh, is Motiva something that you would recommend for people who would scar easily or would form? With, with breast augmentation, another issue is your uh, incision. Uh, so with, uh, with incision, because there are different types, uh, different areas you can actually uh, place the implant. No? So, meron sa axilla. Meron What's sa, is axilla? Sorry. Ah, axilla is here. Yeah. Um, okay, you're on the arm. Okay. Uh, meron sa areola. Yes. Okay, meron sa... Under okay. boob, right? No, areola is yung... Is no, I mean, I know that. The nipple? The nipple okay. and then areola. Uh -huh. And then there's the... Um, kung tawagin is yung inframamory or unders. Yeah. If you read about it, no? So, these are all safe. These are all um, parang uh, patient, uh, patient and doctor preference, no? But what I normally recommend is the inframamory. That, which is the under's pocket. Kasi, uh, what I normally do is, um, 
place the implant uh, under the muscle. It's called subpectoral uh, uh, sub insertion of the implants. Mm -hmm. Now, with this, uh, I use a dual plane. So that technique is um, it also helps with the natural look of the breast. So, yeah, so basically, uh, you know, um, advantage you know, from that is better to, it's easier to do the dual plane. How about the healing? How long does it take? Uh, yeah, downtime normally it's about uh, normally the uh, normal swelling is about about three to five days, and then on the you can't take a shower. When ako ay allow, oh, okay. okay, because it's in the Philippines, medyo yung big thing to me. So but normally, di ba ayaw ka na pa pasay mo? Yeah, no. Ako, uh, okay na man. Yeah, you can wait uh, the incision, mm -hmm. and then as long as you after you apply. Which is also included in the package. Mm -hmm. Apply it in the incision and then apply it once. And then uh, yeah. so we will make it. It's the oh, okay. So, and then after that, how long that I have to come back? Like uh, oh, yeah. So, basically, uh, because there's going to be stitches after it. Yes. So, I don't I don't just leave you absorbable stitches. I leave you when, when absorbable. So, you have to go back. So, I don't take it out on 7th. Yeah, so, and then at the seventh day, uh, you can actually do normal stuff, but all strenuous activities will be only allowed four weeks after the surgery, or four to six weeks. So, you still have to take care of your breast. Yeah. You still have to, um, uh, don't, you cannot do like no gym. Diving. No, no, I mean, gym you can do uh, like walk, but not like, you know, jog. Jog, jog you can do, but like jogging now. Okay. Pero, and yeah, but after, but after seven, after taking up the stitches, yes. you strenuous like you know, uh, for example, yoga, like the mga boxing, four to six weeks pa yan, you know, talaga yung full workout. Oh, okay. So, uh, with scarring, again, with, since this is a very elastic, as you can see, very elastic, you know, uh, with the incision per se. Yes. Yes, uh, so, again, uh, I, uh, what I normally do is uh, inframamory for the incision. Mm -hmm. So, um, with, 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 since, it's, with, since it's very elastic, mm -hmm. you can do like small incision only, and you can actually put it inside oh. uh, easier. Because it's more um, elastic and very durable. Mm -hmm. So you can see, you can feel it actually. Yes. It's a more natural feel. And a lot firmer than this. Yes, oh, correct. Okay. Really nice. Okay, so our next tip feature is the implant placement. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so another good feature of this implant, you know, the implant is that I was going to the molecular level, but no? we claim that it's a um, true model block. Mm -hmm. So, true, true model block shell. Meaning that, because you can see, it's a round shell. No? Yes, so, you yeah, it's dome shape. Siya. So, um, the strength of the shell is evenly distributed in all areas. So, that's why it's very elastic. You can see. So, oh, it's like it's so stable oh. in all sides. Yeah, yeah. Oh. Oh, so, it's so very matiba. Talaga to. So, I, um, since uh, I've known the matiba, it's very matiba. We are recommending it for now. Then, mm -hmm. um, um, also, uh, I'll discuss no, ang, with, with this implant, kasi there's two types of Mutiba. Um, meron yung round, mm -hmm. and then this one, and then meron yung ergonomics. No? So, they have actually the same shell. Uh, Pareha sila ng shell. Um, um, the difference lang is that ang round um, is that it will stay round. It, it, if ever you stand, stand or, up, yeah. or you lie down. With ergonomics kasi, para siya, it's, uh, it's, uh, para siya, it acts as a uh, eardrop sheet. So, oh, okay. so the, the viscosity of the the, the silicone is uh, much different. So, parang it's much less viscous. So, if you stand up with, with the ergonomics, it will look more like, like a uh, teardrop shape. Like the natural yeah, fall of the breast. Yeah, natural of the breast. But if you lie down, it's gonna, it's gonna be this round. Oh, okay. So, that's why it's very, uh, this is the high tech part. Not really, right now, the the next generation. That's the yeah. cutting edge. Yeah. I agree. Especially I see that there's a little QID yeah, here. Yeah, QID. Yeah. With Motiva, ang isang pag nang uh, added ano siya is that kung makita mo, meron siya no yes. QID. And uh, what, it, what it does is... So it, small, it's like a grain of rice. Yeah, yeah. So what it does is it contains uh, information about the patient, mm -hmm. the size of the implant, and... Uh, when it was inserted? Uh, I think so. And also, so, and you should have to Use the QID scanner. Uh -huh. Even inside you, just QID it, uh -huh. swipe it, or scan it. And then the information about the implant, the patient's information, will be available.
Wow, that's really. So this is like your most recommended. Yeah, right now I, I actually use a lot of implants, but uh, again, yeah, since uh, since Motiva is now um, available in the market, it's really what I really recommend for for uh, for, for all my patients. But again, it's still your choice, but it's uh, it's what I recommend. Well, how, doc, um, I just want to have like a ballpark uh, figure. Ah, okay. So that's a good question. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. So um, again, with 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 uh, round and uh, ergonomics implant, it's different. Because oh, okay. the new way, the new way again, it, it acts as a para pier round. No? Mm-hmm. So with with the uh, round only, uh, I don't really, I can only give a package uh, a package ballpark figure. Yes. So with round only, it's about one hundred forty, one hundred sixty thousand pesos. Mm-hmm. It's all there. It's a package. It's inclusive of everything. Medications, the blood tests, the, blood tests, mm-hmm. the three doctors, the mm-hmm. the the cardiologist, it's packaged actually, all operating room costs. With the ergonomics, it's, again, it's really new. It's uh, it's more um, Don't you know. it's, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So with this, um, about two hundred to two hundred fifty thousand mm-hmm. if wow. you choose the ergonomics. So doc, what are the other things that make Motiva stand out from the rest of the present plans? Yeah. Uh, Actually, the most important uh, feature is that this is already a FDA approved by the Philippines. So, so True, that's very important. It's actually also FDA approved in most most Europe, uh, and uh, I think in Asia it's number one implant right now. In Korea, it's it's the most used by plastic surgeons already. Mm-hmm. So uh, it's a good thing that we have it here already in the Philippines. Mm-hmm. So that's why I, I really try to recommend it to most of my patients uh, to use. Uh, to prefer Motiva. Yeah, because it's the than, safest. Yeah, right now I think it's the safest. Mm-hmm. So, again, it's FDA approved. What more can you ask? Yeah, I agree. Okay. Thank you so much, Doc, for having this Thank interview. You. And I, I learned a lot about Motiva breast implants and the differences between different implants. So, I guess that's all for today's interview. If you have any other questions about having your boob job or any breast augmentation surgery or any anything about breast implants, don't forget to get in touch with Dr. Papelan here at Sumati Plastic Surgery Clinic. And I'm sure you'll be in good hands. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank I hope you learned know. a lot with this. Uh, I did, and I enjoyed talking about it. Thank you very much. Thank you for visiting my clinic. Thank you. <laughs> That's the steering area. So we have two operating rooms actually mm-hmm. here in the main part. So here is the recovery room. Mm-hmm. Okay. So after the surgery, you'll stay here actually. Mm-hmm. Until you're fully awake. We won't uh, let you go. Send us home. Oh, you can't go away. Okay. So stay here. Usually, the progress of mutation is stay here about two to three hours. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it depends. If you want to go, you can't go. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, I also have to mention that this opening uh, room is DOH accredited. Mm-hmm. So it's an ambulatory clinic that's DOH accredited. That's good. Which is important that that's safety. Yeah. If you, uh, if you're if you plan to go to our clinics and look for that accreditation, it's mm-hmm. DOH accredited. Yeah, I think it's important, important to have all those regulations yeah. and yeah, checks your covered. Yes. Yeah, isn't that it? Oh, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you. Hey guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to hit thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Don't forget to follow me on my social media accounts and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!